Hello, it's your boy Spence here, and in this video, you will learn to write the perfect auto estimate caused by blowing wind debris that will satisfy any insurance company. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Now, come on, let's go get started. Okay, we're at the vehicle to scope the vehicle for the perfect auto estimate caused by blowing wind debris. That's three things you should know when scoping the vehicle. Number one, scope the vehicle one panel at a time. Number two, scope the vehicle one panel at a time and write your damages down on your scope sheet. Number three, don't forget to write down your unrelated damages on your scope sheet. Here's a copy of the scope sheet. You can download a copy of the scope sheet below. When I first get to an inspection, the very first thing I do is take my photos. Photos are very, very, very important. See my videos on the required photos for the insurance company. So when I begin my inspection, I start with the front bumper first and work my way around to the back bumper. Starting with the front bumper, I determine how much damage is on the front bumper. Remember, as an adjuster, it's your job to determine how many repair hours to put on each panel. So on the bumper, I see that's three hours worth of damage on the bumper, so I write that on my scope sheet. Once I inspect my bumper, then I go to my bumper components, which is my fog light, my sensor, my lower valence, and my grill. Once I inspect those bumper components, I determine whether they need to be one or three things, replaced, repaired, and I definitely need to R and I them. Once I finish the bumper and its components, I move to my headlights. Now I do notice that this right headlight does not have any damage on it, but this headlight needs to be R and I. R and I means to remove and install back. I need to remove this headlight because I'm painting this fender, then I install the headlight back once I paint the fender. Once I leave the right headlight, I move around to my left headlight and I inspect my left headlight for damages while I'm in the front of the vehicle. I do see there's damage on this headlight, so what I do is I put that headlight on my scope sheet to be replaced. Once I inspect my headlights, then I move to my hood. I do notice that my hood has scratches and chips on my hood. You cannot see the damages, but I see the damages all in the hood, so I do put my hood on my scope sheet to be repaired for two hours. Once I leave my hood, I move to my windshield, and I inspect my, and I inspect my windshield for damage. I do notice there's chips and scratches on the windshield, so I put the windshield on my estimate to be replaced. Once I leave my windshield, I come to my fender and I inspect my fender for damage. I inspect the panel first. Once I inspect the panel for damages, I write that on my scope sheet. Then I inspect the panel components, which is the wheel opening moldings, the vent guard, and the 3.7, which need to be replaced. So now that I've finished scoping my fender, I look at my front left wheel and I inspect my front left wheel for damages. I don't see any damages on my front left wheel, so I put that on my scope sheet, no damages. Then I move to my front door and I inspect my panel first for damages. Once I inspect the panel itself for wind to bleed damages, I put that on my scope sheet then I inspect my, my front door components, which is my mirror, my upper molding, my belt molding, my applicator, my handle, and my lower molding. I inspect all of those components for damages. If they got damage on it, remember, I do one of three things. I are now, most definitely, I replace them or I repair them. So once I finish my front door and its components, I move to my rear door. And I notice my rear door has some damage here. So I'm gonna write that damage on my scope sheet. And then I'm gonna look at my rear door components, which is my upper molding, my belt molding, my rear applicator, 
and my handle, then I'm going to check my lower molding for damage. So once I'm done with the rear door and its components, I move to my quarter panel. Remember, I check the quarter panel for damage first, the panel for damage first. I write that on my scope sheet, and then I check my quarter components. The quarter glass, the tail light, and the wheel open motor. I'm checking all these components for damages, and then I write that on my estimate, and then I move to my next panel. My next panel is my roof. So I grab my ladder, I get up on top, and I look my roof over real good for damages. If damages on my roof, was that there are damages on my roof, I put that on my scope sheet, then I look at my roof components, which is the, the roof rack, the molding, the antenna, and also the sunglass. So once I inspect the whole roof and this component, I move around to my lift gate then. I inspect my lift gate first, looking for damages. I do know there's damage on the top of my lift gate, and there's damages here, scratches and chips. So then I put that on my estimate, and then I check my lift gate components, my third brake light for damage, the brake light within the lift gate for damage. My emblem need to be replaced. My finish molding need to be R9. Remember, R9 means to remove paint the panel, and then install it back again. Then my lower molding for damage. Then also the QX70 uh, need to be replaced. Once I finish inspecting my lift gate, I move to my bumper. I do notice there's damage on this side of the bumper, so I would repair this side of the bumper, paint, blend it, then clear coat the whole bumper. So now I'm done inspecting my bumper, I go to the right side of my vehicle here, scope the vehicle from the front bumper to the rear bumper. Now that we have finished scoping the vehicle, let's go write the estimate. Let's get logged in. Now that we have scoped the vehicle, it's time to write the estimate. Please subscribe to our channel and leave a comment. When you learn this high value skill as an independent adjuster, you can earn anywhere between $450 and $750 per day, depending on what insurance company you're working for. The adjusting company will also pay you to travel. Little to no experience is needed. They will train you on what to do. Subscribe to our channel and learn this high value skill. Okay, now let's go inside and write the estimate in our estimating software. Come on, let's go get started. We're logging into our CCC1 estimating software. Let's get this party started. You notice the first page you bring us to is the workflow page where you'll find all of your claims. If you need to start one from scratch, just simply go up here to the top left hand corner, click on new, click on work file. And it would open up a new work file for you where you fill in all of the information that's needed. But in this video, we already have one to work in our work file. So we're going to take the one in our work file and we're going to double click on it. And you'll notice the first page it brings you to is the contact page where the insured information, name and information is here. The only thing you need to do is on this page is enter in you as the adjuster by clicking here on add, new contact, and down here where it says adjuster, put your name, phone number, and your email address. Now that we have our name here, our email address here, and our phone number here, let's go to the next tab, which is the insurance tab. Once you're in the insurance tab, just make sure the insurance company that you're working for is here, the claim office is here, then you see yourself here as the adjuster. Make sure you have the deductible correct right here. And on the right side of the page, you will find your claim number, the vehicle type, type of loss, loss date, day reported, 
and the state, and then we will go to the next tab, which is the inspection tab. Uh, if you are working the vehicle at the shop, if you are working the claim at the shop, and then you want the shop information here, along with at the bottom, the days of repair here. Over on the right, you want the appointment day, the day inspected, it's the day that you inspected the vehicle, the site type. If you choose home, it'll generate the insurance name and address. If you choose repair facility, it will bring over from the left to the right the repair facilities information. And if you choose work, it will generate the insurance name, but you have to put in the address of his work, okay? So once we're done with that, we go to the vehicle tab. In the vehicle tab, you will see the VIN number. If you start in one from scratch, you have to enter the VIN number in there yourself. But here, we have the VIN number here. We want to hit decode. Once the vehicle is decoded, you'll get a green check and it says good VIN. Once it's decoded, it automatically populate the type, year, make, and model of the vehicle. You will have to enter in the mileage, the odometer. The exterior color is required. The interior color is optional. Paint codes is optional. The license plate is required and so is the state. Over on the right side of the uh, inspection page, you'll see where it says repairable vehicle con condition. I never put anything in condition. Below that, you will see primary point of impact. You choose the appropriate box for the claim that you're writing, but in this case, uh, we are doing a wind debris claim, so I'm choosing non-collision. Second point of impact, again, you choose the appropriate uh, box and down here where it says drivable or not drivable I always choose something in drivable or not drivable I'm at the vehicle I'm doing the inspection then I do know if I'm on the phone with the insured I'm doing them by photos or video then I just simply ask the insured but I always either choose drivable or non drivable I never choose unknown if at all possible okay so now that we got all the information on the vehicle page, we go to the estimate page. And on the estimate page is where we will write our estimate on this sheet of paper here. And then we will use our parts in our part category down here. But before we start writing our estimate, let's go and make sure our rates are correct. Our rates are here and they are correct. Now, if you're working in a state that tax body labor, body, paint, mechanical, frame, structure, if you're working in a state that tax labor on the body and refinish, then you want to make sure you put a check mark in these boxes here for it can tax the labor for you. The state I'm working in does not tax labor, so I remove the check marks. I do want to make sure I got a check mark and paint supplies I do have my check mark there I move to my next tab I want to attach my photos the first thing I do when I get to an inspection I take my photos and as soon as I get back to my computer to write the estimate I go ahead and put my photos on my desktop in a folder because photos are very very important so in order to attach your photos you click on attachments here then you click on action and then from folder. You find the folder that's named your insured name. In this case, it's John Doe. You highlight it and you click open. Once you see your photos, you highlight all of your photos and hit open again. And it will put your photos into your estimate, okay? Now that we have our photos attached and our rates is correct, let's go back to the estimate tab and begin estimating our vehicle. So I write my estimate just like I scope my vehicle. I start with my front bumper first. So let's click on the front bumper. So 
uh, put your arrow on the front bumper and double click on it and it will open up the front bumper panel okay now let me show you this before we get started uh, let's click on this bumper if you notice up in the middle here you've got tab to say motor tire part codes those three tabs we'll be using to write this estimate and under those three tabs in motors we see filter h notes frame refinish blend r and replace repair session all of these tabs we'll be using to write the estimate so let's get familiar with what these tabs mean okay let's go to our photos so estimate operation red section is the most used for wind debris estimating okay so h notes refinish blend r and i repair replace operations pause the video and get familiar with the different operation that you're going to be using to write your estimate there is one i would like to highlight and make sure you fully understand what this one is a lot of people get this one confused r and i means to remove and to install this happens when a part is removed from the damaged vehicle and reinstalled the removed part may be either repaired separate if required so r and i means to remove and install so you re you're removing the part from the vehicle and you install it back at a later date let me give you an example if you was uh let's click on my let's go to my door if you was repairing this door panel and you had damage on the door panel but the handle need to be r and i removed and installed you simply are not a handle sit it to the side repair the door panel paint the door panel and reinstall the door handle that's what r and i means so the mirror needs to be r and i if you're re finishing a door panel you need to r and i the mirror you can remove the mirror and the mirror may need some repair done on it so you repair it while it's off the door and then you reinstall it once the door is painted and the mirror is refinished okay so that's what r and i means so let's go back to our bumper so the first thing i want to do to my bumper because my bumper i'm repairing my bumper and it has a lot of attachments to it has a lot of parts attached to the bumper so the first thing i want to do is i want to overhaul my bumper overhaul simply means to detrim the bumper let me select the picture and show you what that means let's pull up a picture of our bumper here okay here's a picture of our bumper this is the bumper cover look at the attachments that's on the bumper cover you have your grill you have your park sensors you have your fog lights and you have your lower valence those parts need to come off of the bumper before the repair and refinish process started it's called d-trim and each one called R not remove them and then when the bumper is refinished then install them back again okay so let's go back and let's uh, go to our estimate so we do have overhaul bumper there and then it says add for sensors we want to add for sensors to the estimate because we do know that sensors on that bumper okay so now that we overhauled the bumper and we added for the sensors let's go up and, and select our bumper cover with park sensors and what do we want to do to that bumper cover we want to repair that bumper cover so it asks us a question refinish part in our part category we know that refinish means paint so the system is asking us do we want to paint that part and the answer to that question is yes we want to paint that part okay now it's asking us another question it says would a bumper be refinished in a separate procedure from the other panels now let me show you what they mean by that let me cancel this right here let me go back to my photo 
And let me select my bumper. So, both front and rear bumper are repaired and refinished separate from the vehicle. They actually remove the bumpers off of the vehicle and repair them on a stand and refinish them, okay? So let's go back to our bumper and answer that question. So we're going to do a repair. Refinish part, yes. So will the bumper be refinished in a separate procedure from the other panels? Yes, the bumper will be refinished separately from the vehicle. It's what they're asking us. So in this instance, we want to click yes. So we get a window that opens up and asks us how many uh, repair time do we want to re, uh, re, re, repair that bumper. So on my scope sheet, I put everything on my scope sheet. And on my scope sheet, I have three hours to repair that bumper. So I put three hours there on the labor for body labor here. Uh, body labor is a judgment call. You are the adjuster. You adjust. It's up to you to determine how many hours it's going to take to repair a panel. Okay? So I, I said it's going to take 3.3 hours. Refinished labor is automatically generated at 2.9. And I'm going to click on add to my estimate. Okay? So now we are finished with the bumper. Let's go to our grill. We did notice that there was damage to the grill. The grill cannot be uh, repaired. The grill must be replaced. So we're going to click on our grill here. And then we're going to say replace grill. Right there. Okay. So then once we finish with the bumper panel and the grill, we go to our next panel. So our next panel will be the headlights. Let's click on headlights. I'm going to double click on it. So we do know that we're going to replace the left headlamp and then we're going to R now the right headlamp. Why? Because the right fender need to be refinished because we are refinishing the complete hood. Anytime you paint a hood completely, you have to blend over on the fenders. Okay? So let's select our headlights. So we do know the left one is being replaced. And so it asks us a question. Uh, do the headlight need to be aimed? The answer to that question is yes. So we put a check mark in the box. If it's a new headlight, then it needs to be aimed. If it's an used headlight that was R9 removed from the vehicle and installed back, then it do not need to be aimed. It should have already been aimed. Okay? So I'm going to tell it okay. Then I'm going to get my right headlight. And I'm just going to R9 that headlight. And we're not going to aim that one because it's it's already been aimed okay so now that we are done with our headlights let's go back to our groups and select our next panel in our list in our next panel which is the hood panel so we're going to double click on the hood panel and then we're going to highlight the hood okay so what do we want to do to that hood we want to repair that hood we click on repair and then from our scope sheet we look at our scope sheet how many hours did we say it was going to take to repair that hood? So we wrote down two hours to repair the hood. It automatic, automatically figure up, refinish, and we just say add to our estimate. Okay? Now we are done in the hood section. So we go into our next panel, and our next panel is our fenders. Let's double click on our fenders. Remember, the left fender is being repaired because our damage was all down our left side. But the right fender is being refinished or blended because the hood is being completely uh, painted, okay? So let's click on this let down window right here. We're going to select our left fender. We're going to choose repair. It opened up a window. And how many hours did we say we wanted to repair that fender? 1.0. One hour. It automatically figured up the refinish. I'm going to say add to estimate. Then I'm going to go to my right fender. What I want to do to my right fender, I want to blend my right fender. So I'm going to highlight it, and I'm going to click blend. Okay? Now, we know that some detrimming need to go on. There's some parts that are attached to the fenders that need to come off in order to refinish the fenders. Okay? Let's go and look at our picture. 
How about fender here? So these are the parts that need to be R9 or replaced because we are refinishing this fender. The headlight, the headlight is already being replaced, so we've already removed it off the car. The bumper, the bumper has already been addressed. It's, it's going to be overhauled. The fender liner need to be R9. Fender liner here need to be R9. The fender flare need to be R9. The molding, which is called the uh, vent grill, need to be R9. And you notice the nameplate, the 3.7, need to be replaced. It's a stick on. Okay. The rocker molding uh, need to be R9 in order to get paint on the bottom side of the fender. So let's go back to our estimate. And the first thing we see here is our fender liners, number four and number five. So we have a front fender liner and we have a rear fender liner. Not every vehicle have a two-piece fender liner. Most of them are one piece. So we're going to find out, we can, we can simply click on the four and it's going to find our fender liner for us. So we're going to R9 the right one. Then we're going to R9 the left front one. Then we're going to R9 the rear and the rear. So all of our fender liners is on the estimate. So we can go ahead and let this uh, box up and then go to our exterior trim and let that box down, okay? So we see our vent grill right here. What we need to do to it, R9, R9, and also in our exterior trim, we see our wheel opening moldings. We're going to R9 both of the wheel opening moldings, okay? Now, if we click on wheel opening molding screws, we are noticed here in our part codes where it says part cannot be uh, reused or installed. Five of these uh, is required. So we need to add these screws to the estimate because they cannot be reused. So we just simply click on them. And we say replace. Click on the left one and say replace. And we do know that five of them is uh, needed, right? So we go over here to quantity. We come down where they put one here and a one here. And we change the one to a five. And change this one to a five. And there's one other thing we must do. We want to tell the shop and the insurance company why we replace those screws. Because in our part description, it told us that those screws cannot be reused or reinstalled. So you can click on your line note. It's right here and just simply say copy, then click OK, and then you want to highlight the line. You can put it on both of these lines or you can put it on just one. I normally put it on one, the very last one. So when you highlight the line, you right click, then a box open up and you choose line note here and you click on it. A window will open up, and up at the top, it says line note here. At the bottom here, it says paste the line note. Our note is part cannot be reused or installed. Five of these is required. So we click on that to paste it. It goes up into our line note right here. Right there, in our line note. And the only thing we got to do is tell it, okay. And then out to the left of it, we see there's an end here for line note and it reads exactly what it said okay right there so then we need to uh we know we need to replace our nameplate which is 3.7 i got it highlighted and i'm going to click replace and we notice that it's on the estimate now we can do one or two things here we can go over to quantity and change the one to a two because we know that we need two of them, one for the left fender and one for the right fender, correct? Or we can do it the way I like to do it. I'm just going to choose another line here. I'm going to choose my 3.7 again and say replace. And it asks, as the nameplate 3.7 is already selected, it's asking me do I want to select it again. I'm going to say yes. 
I'm going to put it on there twice, and I'm going to come here out beside it, and I'm going to put an L, LT for left side, and I'm going to put a RT for right. I'm going to put it on the estimate twice so there's no doubt about it that I've addressed both of the 3.7s, one for the left side and one for the right side, okay? Okay, now we are finished in our fender with our fender panel. Let's go see what the next panel is in our lineup. It will be the electrical. So let's double click on electrical to open it up. What do we want to do in electrical? We want to R and I the antenna. Let's go look at a picture. Let's go to our roof. So you see on this roof, we're going to be doing some repair and refinish on this roof. And that antenna is sitting right there in the way. We need to R and I that antenna for we can do a proper refinish on this uh, on the roof. So let's exit out of this. Let's go back to our estimate. And let's find the roof. Let's find the antenna. Click on antenna. We do know that the antenna have a navigation system. So I'm going to click on antenna with navigation. And I'm going to R and I. And the antenna is on the estimate. Okay. So now that we have R9 the antenna, let's go back to our groups to get to our parts. Our next panel that we need to address is our wheels. So I'm going to double click on wheels to open up that section. And I want to do what to my wheels? I want to R9 my wheels. So I know my wheel is an 18-inch alloy wheel. So I'm going to click on uh, R9. Now, it brings up a window. Uh, it says left front, right front, left rear, right rear. Now, however, we want to do the front two uh, wheels, but we can only do them one at a time. So I'm going to put a bullet mark in left front and tell it OK. I'm going to go back down to my description right here. I'm going to click on R&I again. I'm going to put a bullet mark in my right front and tell it OK. So now I have both of my wheels to be r and on the estimate now you may not want to do this on the initial estimate but if the vehicle is at the shop and you're going out to do a supplement and the shop requested those two front wheels be r and then go ahead and give it to them okay because sometimes those wheels need to come off in order to get those fender liners off let me show you a picture of that again let's look at our fender so we, ha we have to uh, take our fender liner off not to get paint on it when we paint the uh, the fender itself. Sometimes these wheels make it difficult to get to the clips in order to remove those fender liners. So sometimes the wheels need to be R9, okay? So that's why we put those on the estimate. Like I said, if the shop asks for it, just go ahead and give it to them. So let's go back to our estimate. And let's go back to groups. And let's find our next panel. Next part, which is the windshield. So I'm going to double click on the windshield. It's going to open up the windshield section, okay? Before we go to glass, let's, while we in the tire, the wheel section, let's go ahead and replace our left tire, left front tire. So right here beside motors, you will see tire, okay? Click on tire, and then it'll bring up a list of brand name tires right here. So you select the brand name of your tire. In this case, our brand name tire is Bridgestone. So we're going to click on it. We're going to double click on it. And it's going to bring up a list of Bridgestone tires right here. So what you want to do is to search for your tire. And this box here says size search. Go ahead and type in the size of your tire. 265 forward slash 60. And it's an R18. Mine is an R18. And it'll bring up a list of 265, 60, R18 tires, which is right down upon of the search. So then just look for your brand name tires, and mine is right here. Once you find your brand name tire, then you just highlight it. Now, over on the right, it gives you businesses that you can purchase that tire from. Let's just select one. Highlight it. And right over here where it says replace, there's an arrow right beside replace let that arrow down and it says replace with charges 
So I'm going to click on replace with charges and it's going to bring up a window with the description of your tire in there. So look it over real good. Make sure it's the description of your tire, the price, and then the labor hours is there. And then tell it, uh, okay, add it to the estimate. So how, how are we going to let the, let the insurance company or the body shop know that what tire are we referring to? You can triple click in this line and bring up a cursor and you can type in left front. So they know we're talking about that we're replacing the left front tire. Okay. Now you can put some type of parentheses around it or something to separate it. Let the shop know uh, what tire we are referring to. That's two other things that we're going to do while we at the tire section. The tire need to be mount and balanced. Okay. So what do we find mount and balanced? In our part codes, right here beside tire, we see part codes. Okay. So you click on part codes and there's a bunch of part codes down at the bottom here and you just find the one that you're looking for. So we're looking for tire mount and balance and here it is right here. Tire mount and wheel balance. If we double click on it, it'll put it into the estimate, okay? Now there is a shortcut that you can use. Let's go ahead and delete that. Let's delete it. Now let's highlight that line. You see out beside it where it says D7 right here? D7 is a part code. If we just simply type a lowercase d7 and then hit enter, it'll put that part code up there for us, okay? If you remember the part code number. Now, we also need to do a, 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 mount, a, a tire disposable. So our tire disposable is going to be L05. So watch this. I'm going to type in lowercase l. 05 you see that then I'm gonna hit enter and it put our tire disposable in our estimate okay so that that's uh what we do in, in our tire section so let's go back to motors our parts now let's go to our windshield and add our windshield to the estimate what do we want to do to the windshield we want to replace the windshield so we're gonna hit this window here and drop that down and then our windshield is the one that says windshield without rain sensors. So let's click on windshield without rain sensors. And we can simply click on replace. And it added to the estimate, okay? Now, when you get to the windshield, sometimes the windshield labor rate differs from the body labor rate, okay? Let me show you that. Let's go to rates here. Now we see on body rate, it's $52 an hour, and that's what it defaults to. It defaults to the body rate. But if you notice, the glass rate is $35 an hour. So if, you, if the particular company that you are working for is charging $35 an hour or have their own glass rate, then you want to default to their glass rate. So you see this G right here. The part code for glass is G right there, okay? Let's go back to our estimate. If you take that G and right there beside the labor, as a box to the right of it, if you put a G there, it will change that glass labor rate, uh, that body labor rate to glass labor rate, okay? Now, the other thing you want to do while you're in the glass section is you want to put a urethane kit there to put that glass back in. What do we find it at? Let's go back to our part codes right here. Click on part codes. And it should be somewhere in our part codes. And remember, you can add to these part codes as much as you want to add to them. So let's go all the way to the bottom. I do know that my, my part code is at the bottom here. So you see your thing kit? Now if I had to remember the uh, the uh, code over here, I could have simply typed the code in, but I didn't remember it. So I'm going to double click on your thing kit. I put it in the estimate, and I'm going to go out beside it and put the price of the your thing kit. In this case, it's $25. Okay? That's adding the OEM windshield to the estimate. That's a dealership windshield. OEM original equipment manufacturer. Now, let's remove that windshield from the estimate. Let's look at another scenario, okay? Now, just say, for instance, that you're at the shop 
or the insured has already had the windshield replaced, okay? And and uh, they, they have provided you with an invoice and you want to put it on the estimate per invoice, okay? So you just simply highlight windshield, go up here to operations here, drop that down and right here where you see sublet, click on sublet. Now, so you have to enter in the price of the windshield. So let's just say the windshield is $341.95. So I'm going to put $341.95 there. That's the total price of the windshield tax included. So when you put it in as a sublet item, it will not tax it again, okay? Then tell the estimate, okay, and it's got it in there as a sublet item. And you notice the X beside the price mem uh, is telling us that it's not taxed, okay? Now, one more scenario on the windshield, and then we're going to move forward. Let's delete this out again. And if we want to put a NAGS glass in, let's click on NAGS glass. Click on NAGS, which is going to be like a safe light glass on aftermarket glass. If you want to put that in your estimate, you highlight it, then you go over to operations. And then you click on sublet glass, which our sublet glass is grayed out. But you would click on sublet glass, okay? But it's grayed out right now. So I'm going to go back to, uh, I'm going to replace it and show you what it's going to do. I'm going to replace it. So it's going to put in the estimate as a nice nice glass. Now, when you, when you select it as a sublet glass, it does not give you the labor rate on the same line. It gives you the labor rate on another line. Okay, let's choose replace. Let's highlight glass. Let's paste it there. So it gives it to you on another line. Let's go ahead and put 2.8 here. And you still want to put in uh, your G for glass rate. And you want to back back on NAGS without sensor and then type in labor. Okay. Type in labor. And on the on the um, sublet glass, it's going to already come with the kit. So you don't have to worry about the urethane kit. So that's the way it's going to look. You have to copy this line, back back on everything but windshield, add in labor, and put your labor out in the labor area and put a G beside it. That's how you handle a sublet glass if you're replacing it with a NAGS, okay? Okay, now we're done with the glass. Uh, panel. Let's go to our next panel, which is our roof panel. So we're going to double click on it. What do we want to do to that roof? We want to repair that roof. How many hours do we want to repair that roof? We want to repair that roof for 2.5 hours. So we drop this window down here. We choose our roof panel. Now you notice it says roof panel without roof rail. Roof rail is our luggage racks. We do know that that particular vehicle has luggage racks on it. How do we fix that? Okay, let's just let let's just let this back up. Let's go to vehicle right here. Let's click on vehicle. These are all the options on our, on that particular vehicle. We want to find roof and click on roof. And right up here it says luggage rack roof luggage roof racks. You want to put a check mark in that box, okay? Now let's go back to our estimate. Let's drop down roof again. And now let's go back to groups. Let's go back to roof. And now it says here roof panel with roof rail. That's what we want, okay? So what we're going to do with that panel? We're going to repair it for what? 2.5 hours, it automatically generates refinish, and we want to add it to our estimate, okay? Now, on that roof, we know that some detrimming need to go on, okay? We need to detrim that roof. Let's go take a picture, take a look at a picture of the roof right here. So, we need to detrim this whole roof in order to do a repair and refinish on this roof. So, we need to R9 both belt moldings. The antenna is already R&I. 
Both luggage racks need to be R9. The sunroof need to be R9 on some vehicles. Sometimes it need to be R9 and sometimes it don't. You the adjuster, you adjust, you make the call, okay? So in order to get the luggage racks and antenna off the vehicle, we have to R9 the headliner as well. The interior headliner I need to be R9 in order to get to the luggage rack and the antenna and the sunroof, okay? So let's go back and perform those operations. Let me show you what a headliner is just in case somebody don't know. This is the headline. It's on the inside of the vehicle, right up above your head, okay? That need to be R9 in order to get to the luggage rack, the sunroof, and the antenna. So I go back to my estimate. And the first thing I see here is my exterior trim. I want to drop that window down, and I want to R9 both roof moldings. Okay. Now, you notice when I clicked on roof molding clips, at the bottom down here, it says part cannot be reused or installed. Eight of these are required. So we want to add to the estimate the roof molding clips, okay? So we're going to highlight it and say replace. Then we're going to highlight the left one and say replace. Now it's telling us that eight of these are required. So we're going to go over to our quantity, come down to the one, and we're going to put an 8 there on for the right one and also 8 for the left one. And then we're going to copy this line note. I clicked on it. I'm going to click on copy. I'm going to click on OK. I'm going to highlight. You can put it on both lines or you can put it on one line. I typically put it on one line. That's the bottom line. I'm going to highlight the line. I'm going to right click and it's going to bring up a box. I'm going to click on line note. It's going to bring up a window for me to put my line note in right here. At the bottom here, it says paste the line note. So I'm going to click that. It pastes that line note in there for me. Right there. Letting the insurance company and the shop know the reason we will paste those clips is because they cannot be reused or reinstalled. And we're going to tell it, okay. And we see out beside that line is an N for line notes. And it gives a message there. Okay. All right. Let's let this one up and let's go to our sunroof. What do we want to do to our sunroof? We just want to R9, just the glass only. Okay. And also, we want to go to our luggage rack and R9 both of our luggage racks. We're going to R9 that one and R9 that one. They on the estimate. Okay. And then last but not least, we know we have to R9 our interior trim, our headliner, to get, to get to those components that need to come off the roof. So we're going to highlight it and click R9. And if you notice, my estimate is uniform. Both of my roof moldings is here. Both of my clips is here. My sunroof is here. And both of my racks are here. That's very uniform. So if somebody's trying to follow your flow, they can easily follow your flow, okay? It will make you an A-rated adjuster. Okay, now, uh, we're done with the roof panel. So let's go to our next panel. And that's our rocker, pillows, and molding. Let's click on it, double-click on it. So what do we want to do in this section? We want to repair the roof rail, and we also want to R9 the rocker molding, okay? So, but in this whole section, anything you drop down here, you will not find roof rail anywhere but we need to address the roof rail so how do we do that let me show you right here where it says applicator panel drop that window down right there and choose your left applicator panel because we are repairing the left side of the vehicle and then you want to click on replace you can choose and one of them i choose applicator panel you can choose and one of them you want to choose okay now up in description where it says left applicator panel you double click in that box you can bag back on that applicator assembly and you can type in roof rail. Then the shop and the insurance company will know what panel that we are addressing. Then you come here and type in the hours of repair 
and we determined that it was going to take 1.5 hours. Now, he on refinish. It's got 3.8 on refinish. But that 3.8 is to refinish. Look at number one. That whole applicator assembly, right? We in, we're not painting that whole applicator assembly. Only thing we are painting is this roof rail right here. From the front fender all the way to the back. Let me show you a picture. That, I'm going to click off of this and show you a picture of what we are painting. We are painting just this roof rail. That's what we're dealing with. We got to paint the quarter panel. There's no break here, so we got to paint that roof rail. But we're not painting the whole applicator assembly behind the doors. So let's go and look at that again. One point five. So the three point eight is for the whole assembly. How do we know what to charge just for the roof rail? Okay, let me show you how to find that. Let's let's cancel this, and let's click click on our H notes. We'll click on our H notes. In our H note, it says right here, roof rail. To refinish that roof rail, it's gonna take one point five. You see right there. For to refinish it, just that part, 1.5. That's how you find how much time it's going to take for the roof rail. So we click that. Let's go back and refinish it. We want to change this uh, to roof rail. Also put our 1.5 there. And then we want to change our finish to 1.5. And we want to add it to the estimate. So we got the roof rail there. We got our body labor, our finish labor, and our clear coat there, okay? Let me show you another scenario in the roof rail area. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, delete this again. So just say, for instance, if all you want to do was just blend the roof rail. You know the quarter panel is being repaired and refinished. And when you got to blend up into the roof rail... There's no damage there. You just want to blend it. So highlight it. Click on blend. It's going to put it dead into the estimate. Okay. Now how do you change that applicator assembly now? You can click into that line. Same way. You can back back on it. And then you can change that roof rail. Also inside your estimate. Right there. Okay. Now, one more scenario on that roof rail, then we're going to move forward. So let's go ahead and delete blend. So say, for instance, that the roof rail does not have any damage on it. It has a dent in it. But the dent does not have no scar, and that dent can be PDR, okay? So you simply highlight your part, go over here to PDR, and you click on PDR. It's going to open up a box. Now, you got to determine whether that... Dent is a dime size dent, a nickel size dent, a quarter size dent, or a half dollar dent. Now, I did make a video on PDR and a whole car. Go see the video on PDR, okay? Now, let for, for exercise purposes, let's just say it had a quarter size dent on it, right? Now, with a zero highlighted right here, how many dents is in that roof rail? Let's just say that's one dent. And it paid $100 to PDR that dent. PDR means paintless dent repair. You don't have to paint it. All you got to do is just fix that dent. So we're going to add it to the estimate. But, so then we can also go here and we can change it to roof rail. Okay. But that roof rail, because the quarter panel is being blend, the quarter panel is being uh, refinished. Let's go find our quarter panel again. This quarter panel is being refinished. That roof rail still needs to be blended because there's no brakes there. So you can put your PDR on the estimate, right? And you can also come back and blend it. Change it to roof rail. Okay, got me? All right, let's move forward. Now in this section, we also want to R and I the rocker, man, rocker panel molding, okay? 
Why do we want to do that? Let's look at the picture. Remember on our fender, that rocker panel molding was in the way of getting paint on the bottom side of our fender. So it needs to be R&I, it needs to come off, okay? Let's go back here, let's go back to our estimate, and let's say R&I, okay? Now, let's click on one of our clips. So, the clip says, down here in our description, we clipped on the uh, clip for the rocker panel, it says, part cannot be reused or reinstalled, seven of these in is required. We already know what to do. We're going to put this part for the left, we're going to put it in the estimate, It's on the estimate. We're going to change the 1 to a 7. Then we're going to put our file note to let the insurance company and the shop know why we replaced those screws because they cannot be reused. We're going to highlight the line. We're going to right click on it. We're going to click on file note. Down here where it says paste to, file, to line note, we're going to click on it. It's going to put it up here in our line note right here and then we're going to tell it okay okay so now we are finished with this panel we go back to groups we go to our next panel which is our uh front door so we're going to double click on it so what do we want to do in that front door section we want to repair the front door okay so we click, we drop this window down. So there's two things going on here. Right here where you see in our part description here, you see a number one and a number four. Number one is this whole door shell. You can replace the whole door. Or number four is just the outer door panel. You see over in our description, just the outer door panel. So you can replace this outer door panel without replacing the whole door, okay? So if you got damage just on this outer door panel, go ahead and select outer panel and then repair. Okay, this asks you how many hours to repair and we determined on that front door that was gonna take 1.0 hours uh, to repair that door, one hour. Then we wanna add it to the estimate, okay? Now, uh, so we wanna do some detrimming on that door. So let's take a look at the uh, front door. So what do we want to detrim? We want to R and I this mirror. We want to R and I the belt molding. We want to R and I the handle, and we want to R I the lower molding. Okay. Now, in order to get the mirror and the handle off the vehicle, you have to R and I the inside door panel on the inside of the vehicle, okay? So let's go ahead and exit out this and go back to our estimate and perform those operations. So the first thing we see here is our weather stripping. Number five here. Remember number five is uh, on the inside of the door, but it leans up against the roof rail, right? Let's go look at a picture of that. You see how the weather stripping on the door is next to the roof rail? and the roofer has to be painted, those weather scrippers need to be r and okay? Let's look at another photo of it. Right here, you see how it's attached to the back door? And right here, up next to the roof rail, so you have to r and those weather scrippers in order to do a proper paint on the roof rail, okay? Let's exit that, go back to our estimate. So the first thing we wanna do is r and our weather scripping. So we go r and And we're done in this section, so we're going to let this one to back up and go to our exterior trim. And let that section down. And here we found our belt molding, and we want to R&I our, our belt molding. We're going to R&I it. But we get a box here that says r and is not available. Use R and R time. And R and R means to remove and replace. So we're going to cancel that. And look down here, up under the description, it says part cannot be reused or reinstalled. So we gotta add it to the estimate as a replaced item, right here. Then we gonna put a file note there, we are gonna copy our file note, 
and we're going to tell it OK. And we're going to right click on that line and put our file note there, OK? So down here it says uh, part to line note, paste the line note. And we see it here. And we're going to tell it OK. And out to the side you see where it says uh, N for line note. So the insurance company and the body shop would know why we replaced that part because all belt moldings don't need to be replaced, okay? <clears throat> but in this case, this would need to be replaced, all right? So then we're gonna go to our body molding, that lower molding, we're gonna highlight the left one and we're gonna say R&I. Okay, we get the same message that says R&I time is not available, use R&R, &R, remove and replace, but at the same time, we did not get our file note down here. Our line note saying that part need to be, could not be reused or reinstalled. So we're going to add it to the estimate as an R and I, remove and install. And if that part need to be removed and installed on a later time, uh, we would address it at a body shop on a supplement. But at this moment, on the initial estimate, we're going to leave it on there as a R and I, okay? There it is right there, and the operations is a R and I, okay? So we're done with that section. We're going to let that section back up, and we go into our mirror, and we know that our mirror is uh, with a tilt down, to the left one with a tilt down, and we want to R and I, right there. So even though we R and I that mirror, if that mirror was damaged, maybe had some scratches, some chips on it, and you want to replace it, you can also, you, I mean, you want to repair it. You can also repair it while it's off the vehicle. So you want to put 0.5 to repair it. And then right here, you want to refinish it. Let's put a 0.5 to refinish it. And then we're going to tell it okay. So we do have our mirror there to refinish if it, would, if it needed to be repaired. And also, so it's been repaired there, refinished there, but we don't see any clear coat added. So in order to add clear coat to a refinished panel, just highlight the refinish labor and then right click on that line and at the bottom you'll see where it says add for clear coat you see that click on it and then we'll see we get our refinish and also we have our clear coat okay now we let that window back up and then the next one will be our handle we need to R our handle let that one down highlight the handle and click on R and I and last but not least, uh, we need to R and I the inside door trim panel in order to get the handle and the mirror off, remember? So we're going to R and I the door trim panel. So now we are done uh, with our front door. Let's go to our next panel. And our next panel, uh, let's go back to our estimate. Go back to groups. Our next panel is our rear door. So we're going to double click on it. Now, we're going to do another scenario right here. We're going to replace this rear door, okay? Let me show you how, what to do when you replace it. Remember that number one is for the whole door assembly. But number six here is for the door panel. You see right there, door panel? So we want to replace that door panel. So let's click on replace. It asks me a question. Do I want to add for edging? When we replace that door panel, we're going to do some body work inside the door, on the edge of the door, so we want to say yes. Now it's asking me, do I want to add for the inside? Well, the answer to that question is, if, if we're replacing the door panel, then the answer to that is no, because the inside of the door is already painted. If we're replacing the door, then the answer to that is yes, because the inside of the door is going to either be black, primered, or... If it's a used door, whatever color the used door is, okay? So let's just say it's going to be uh, painted, and we're going to say yes. Okay, so it adds it to the estimate, okay? Now, let's uh, exit out of that. Let's delete that, and let's look at another scenario. Say you wanted to see if there's a used door available. How do you do that? So you want to hit compare. Add for edging, yes. Add for inside, yes. 
and we see that there's no used door available for that particular vehicle so we're going to click add the estimate got me okay now so we also got to do some detrimming so let's go up here and let's look at a picture of the rear door and we need the D trim. We need to R now the belt molding. We need to R now the handle. And we also need to R now the lower molding. And remember, in order to get that handle off, uh, we got to R now the inside door panel. The inside door trim also need to be R now, okay? So let's go ahead and exit out of that. Let's go back to our estimate. And let's first are not our surround side surround weather scripting like on the front door here for that roof rail you are not that then we're gonna let that one up and go to our exterior trim and are not our belt molding and it's telling us the same thing that the belt molding cannot be or not it need to be replaced down here we got a note that's saying part cannot be reused or installed so we're going to cancel that and we're going to replace it we're going to highlight it and we're going to put a file note there we're going to copy it and we're going to right click on the line line note and right here we're going to paste that to the line note and it's there and we're going to tell it okay and out to the left you see the end for line note here okay then also our body molding need to be R9 same scenario with the back door it gives us this box again but it doesn't tell us it need it, it cannot be reused or reinstalled matter of fact on this particular vehicle I do know that that body molding can be reinstalled so we're just going to do R9 for right now if the shop need to replace it we will address it on a supplement at the shop okay then last but not least, we need the R9 our handle. And let's let this one look back up. Let's let this one look back up. And our interior trim to get that handle off need to be R9 as well. Okay? That is an estimate. Let's put it down under where it need to go. R9. Okay? There it is right there. Got it. Okay. Now, let's move to our next panel. Our next panel is the quarter panel. Double click on it. We do know that quarter panel needs some repair time. So we're going to highlight the quarter. We're going to click repair. We're going to put the hours to repair that quarter panel, which is one hour. And we're going to add it to the estimate. Okay. Now, that quarter panel needs some D trimming. So let's go ahead and see what need to be detrimmed. So let's go ahead and click on our picture. Let's go to our quarter panel. So when painting the quarter panel, you need to detrim the roof molding. It's already been detrimmed, already been R and I. We gonna blend this roof rail because there's no break from the from the um, quarter panel up into the roof rail. There's no break, so we already blended the roof rail. So we need R and I the quarter glass. We need the R and I, the tail lamp, the bumper, and the flare that's attached to the uh, quarter panel need to be R and I as well. So let's go and do that. Let's go back to our estimate, and I want you to notice here on the fear door. If your quarter panel that you're working on, if the fear door is attached to that quarter panel, you need the R and I, right? And since you're painting the quarter panel I go ahead and refinish with paint my fear door as well okay but our fear door is not on that particular side so we're not going to put it on the estimate we're going to delete both of those and then we're going to go and detrim the areas that we need to detrim so on our exterior trim we need to we need to R and I will open the molding we're going to R and I 
and remember that wheel open molding screws cannot be um, used or reused or installed so we're going to put a file note we're going to add it to the estimate replace then we're going to put a file note telling the insurance company and the shop while we replace that because it cannot be reused or installed okay we're going to right click on file note we're going to paste our file note up at the top and then we're going to tell it okay so the the roof uh the uh clips is on the estimate for the wheel opening molding okay all right then we're going to what else we need to do to that the quarter glass we need to r and the left quarter glass so we're going to r and up oh, we get a box it says r and is not available use r and r time now we look at the bottom down here. it does tell us that that quarter glass cannot be reused or installed so we're going to cancel that we're going to replace the quarter glass then we're going to put a file note telling them why we replaced that quarter glass because it cannot be reused or installed we're going to right click line note we're going to paste it and we're going to tell it okay and out to the left of it we see we have our in for line note also remember it's a glass so we got to put glass labor go beside the glass labor here uh the labor there's a box there you want to put a g there for glass labor okay and then you also want to put go into your part codes here Go down to your urethane kit, add a urethane kit to put that glass back in, and put the price of the urethane kit. In this case, we're going to put $25, okay? Let's go back to, so we in part code. To, to get back to our parts, click on motors, and it brings us back to the part. And then we're going to let this one up. And then sometimes, in order to get that, uh, quarter glass out you have to R and I the interior trim on the quarter in this case it's not called it says R and I it says time is after lower lower quarter trim is removed but it's not telling us to remove the quarter trim for the glass so we're not going to remove it on this particular estimate okay now go back to our groups what's the next panel that we get to is our lift gate so let's highlight our lift gate and we're going to double click on it we're going to let this window down and we're going to choose our lift gate with navigation because we do know that this vehicle have a navigation on it. We're going to choose repair and on our lift gate, I go back to my scope sheet and I want to see how many hours I put to repair that lift gate. And I got 1.5 hours to repair that lift gate. It automatically figure in for the refinish. I'm going to click add to estimate and it's going to add it to the estimate. Okay. Now, there is some detrimming that need to go on with that lift gate. Let's go and take a look at a photo of the lift gate. So, we need the detrim. We need the R and I, the high mount lamp. It's called the third brake light. Also, the emblem. Now, a lot of times the emblem are stuck on with adhesive backing, so that need to be replaced. We need the R and I to brake lamp both of them we also need the r and i the handle cover and a lot of time it's called the finish molding then we do have a, a lower trim mold in here that's chrome we need to replace it as well because it's stuck on by adhesive backing okay then also the nameplate the qx70 also need to be replaced so let's go and perform those operations we go back to our estimate and we see here there's nothing in this section so we want to let that window up and then hit this window here exterior trim our emblem we're going to replace it our nameplate uh, QX70 we're going to replace it and notice down here it says cannot be reused or installed and our lower molding without sports package it also says cannot be reused or installed so we're going to replace that 
and we also gonna copy our line note just to let the insurance company and the shop know what's going on okay then we're gonna highlight the line we're gonna right click on it line note we're gonna go down here and paste it up here the line note is here and we're gonna tell it okay and out beside this trim is an end for line note got me okay we're gonna let that section uh no we got the uh <clears throat> the handle cover the one i told called a refinish molding it's called the handle cover on this uh vehicle so we got the r and i it as well okay there it is on the estimate and i will tell you that inside that handle cover is the uh rear view camera so the camera is here it's going to also be r and i with the handle cover we can put it on the estimate just to let the shop know that we have addressed it if they want additional time to R not that camera then we'll give it to them at the shop but on an initial estimate just put it on the estimate and let the shop make that decision okay and also uh, last but not least uh, the, the uh, lift gate inside trim panel need to be r and in order to get those parts off of the lift gate let's go and look and see what a lift gate uh trim panel is here is a lift gate trim panel just in case someone did not know this part needs to be r and in order to get to the handle cover uh the uh, the camera and the other parts that need to be r and okay put that back down go back to our estimate Put that back up and we go to our next panel which is our rear lamps we double click on it we do know that we're doing uh we were paying the uh, left quarter panel let's go take a look at that so we are repairing this left quarter panel that light is in the way we need to remove this light in order to get paint on that quarter panel behind the tail light so we got the r and i that tail light and it's going to be the left one. So let's go ahead and R and I that tail light. Then we're going to let this section back up. Now we come to our bag up lights. So let's click on our bag up lights, our brake lights. And we need to R and I both of them. Let's go back to our picture. Let's look at our lift gate. So we got to refinish this lift gate. We got to paint the lift gate. The uh, brake light or the bag of light is right there in the way. We need to R and I those in order to get paint behind uh, on the lift gate, okay? So let's go to estimate and let's R and I both uh, bag up lights here. So we do have both of them on the estimate. Both bag up lights is on the estimate. Then we do see that, uh, let's go ahead and R and I our license plate lamps as well and they do cost 4.2 r and i so that's a little bit more money on the estimate for the in, for the shop okay and last but not least we need to r and i our third our high mount lamp that's on our lift gate and we see that high mount lamp right right here is in that lift gate it's going to be painted so it need to come out as well so we have it on the estimate okay that's all uh on our lift gate our next panel will be our rear bumper so the first thing we're going to do on the rear bumper remember on the front bumper we're going to overhaul it okay that means detrim it it does have some attachment to it let's go look at the rear bumper here's the rear bumper it's got sensors on the rear bumper so we're gonna overhaul that rear bumper okay so we click on replace that means to overhaul it it's gonna add it to the estimate and then we got add for park sensors we're going to also add these park sensors on the estimate we get a window it says add for park sensors is already selected select again we're going to tell them no why are we why are we getting that message let's go and look up in our h note it's going to give us some information it says right here 
overhaul bumper assembly, R9, the rear bumper cover. Look what it says here. Time is for R9, R, 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 all park sensors in the bumper cover and wiring necessary. Okay, so, so in our overhaul here is already included the sensors. So we won't be adding that to the estimate. But then we're going to go here. We're going to choose our bumper cover with sensors. We need to repair that bumper cover. So let's hit repair. Refinish, remember, means paint. So they're asking us, do we want to paint that rear bumper? The answer to that is yes. So ask us another question, just like on the front bumper. Will the bumper be refinished in a separate procedure from the other panels? The answer to that is yes, but let's let's cancel that and let's go look at another photo of the bumper. Remember, both front and rear bumpers are repaired and refinished separately from the vehicle. They repair and paint the bumper off the vehicle. So we go back to our estimate and we repair the bumper. Is it going to be painted? Yes. Is it going to be painted in a separate procedure? Yes. How many hours for that bumper? Let's say it's 0.5, okay? Let me show you another scenario. Let's just put 0.5 on that bumper, okay? Add it to the estimate. Now, so here on the body labor is 0.5. But to paint it is three hours. And that's going to, that's going to uh, uh, include some refinish as well, some paint materials as well. Then the clear coat is 1.2. Well, let's go look at that rear bumper again. So you see this damage right here on the rear bumper? Just say, for instance, that's all the damage on the rear bumper right there. Just that little bitty damage. And the rest of the bumper is picture perfect, okay? Well, the shop is only going to repair and paint this area of the bumper. The rest of the bumper all the way around to the other side of the vehicle is not going to be painted, but it's going to be clear coated. Okay? It's going to be blended in here. They're going to paint. They're going to blend right in here. Then they're going to clear coat the rest of the bumper. So we're not going to pay them to paint this whole bumper when they're not going to paint the whole bumper. So we're going to take a little reduction from that. Okay? How do you do that? Let's go back to our estimate. Okay, you see here they're charging uh, the system automatic default to three hours on that bumper. We want to reduce that just a little bit. So we're going to come and grab us a line right here. In operations here, we're going to click on operations and we're going to put it under refinish, right? We're going to double click on this line and we're going to tell the system we want to partial refinish and the W is for width, right, full, clear. So partial paint, partial refinish mean the same thing, width, full, clear. Now how much time are we going to take away from that three point? Typically you want to take about a third away. Okay, you don't want to kill them. You just want to take just a little bit away just to address it. So what's a third of 3.0? Okay, a third of 3.0 is three divided into 3.0, which we know is one hour, okay? So we don't want to come here on refinish, that partial refinish, we want to highlight that line. We want to hit minus 1.0. Minus 1.0, and the only thing we took away from the shop is just one hour, we left them with two hours, which is plenty to paint the bumper. Then they're going to do a full clear with the 1.2. Y'all follow me? Okay. All right. So we got that scenario out the way. And we want to go back to our groups and go back to our next panel, which is going to be vehicle diagnostic. Let's click on that. Uh, typically, in today's world, the shops are doing a pre-scan and a post-scan on the vehicle. Pre-scan is when the vehicle arrives to the shop. Post scan is when the vehicle is getting ready to leave the shop. So we want to put a pre-scan on there. And we want to tell it to repair. 
and typically uh, we give them either a 0.5 or a one hour okay then we're going to change the category from body to mechanical because it's a mechanical operation and then we want to add it to the estimate okay same with the post inspection we want to do it as a repair we want to do a 0.5 or one hour and then we want to change the body rate to mechanical rate and we want to add it to the estimate now let me give you a couple of definitions of what pre and post scan means okay okay there are your pre and post scans definition you can pause the video and read this also read what it says about after a vehicle has been in an accident uh, that's some good education for you as well then you will know why uh, we uh, put pre and post scan on the estimate okay go back to our estimate and we also got calibrate the back camera we are taking the back camera off the vehicle correct so we put the back camera back on the vehicle and it may need calibrated a lot of times this the shop would sub that out okay so in this case uh we are not going to add it to the estimate we're going to put it there i just want you to see it but we're going to let the shop submit a supplement on that because a lot of times they sub it out we don't know what it's going to cost to calibrate that back camera but when they uh when they do uh sub it out and provide us with an invoice we'll put it on the estimate at that time or you can just leave it on the estimate to let them know that you have addressed it and you're waiting on the price uh, of the calibration so let's just leave it there for right now okay now we are done with the vehicle uh, diagnostic uh, we're gonna go back to our part description and our last part our last panel our last description is miscellaneous operations okay there's four miscellaneous operations that should be considered to go on the estimate on every estimate, okay? Let me give you the definition of the miscellaneous operation that should go on every estimate if it's applicable, okay? Let's go ahead and click on our pictures. Let's click on miscellaneous operations. Miscellaneous operations. Hazard, hazardous waste removable. The removal of leftover paint and other harmful materials. Add this to the estimate when painting occurs. <clears throat> corrosion protection, a primer coating that protect that prevents corrosion. Add this to the estimate when repairing a metal or aluminum surface. Eco, a primer coating that prevents corrosion and add weatherproofing. Add this to the estimate when PDR, paintless dent repair, is used. Cover car, a plastic or paper material used to cover the car to prevent overspray. So it covers a part of the car that you're not painting. That overspray will not get on the other part of the car. Add this to the estimate when painting occurs. Okay, so you can pause the video and read that and get a clear understanding of what those operations are for <clears throat> let's go back to our estimate and we see here cover car we're going to add it to the estimate then where do we find the rest of the part codes let's go to our part codes and let's go all the way to the top and right here we see hazardous waste add it to the estimate we see corrosion protection we're going to add it to the estimate and also we're going to add eco let's just type it in e co add it to the estimate now this estimate is almost completed but let's look at another couple of things if we go up here where it says line and click on other charges epc is also means hazardous waste so if you couldn't find it in your part code, it, it would be right here. Just make sure there's a one there for quantity and then the price for the uh, disposable of it, okay? Now, if you had a towing bill, you also can find towing here. Make sure you add a one here for the quantity 
and then whatever the towing bill is. And if that's for any reason, you need to add storage to the estimate. Storage is also here. Make sure you put a warning quantity and how much the storage was at the shop, okay? Okay, let's go back to our estimate. How do we do that? We, we here in other charges. Let's click on lines. That means our line estimate right there, okay? So we have completed this estimate. If you want to preview this estimate, you go up here on print, click on it, It's going to open up another window. Right here is our estimate. Right now it's still in preliminary estimate. Out to the right of it says preview. Let's click on preview. Here we can preview our estimate up top. You have some arrows here. You want to go forward. Hit that arrow. Hit it again. And it start with the front bumper headlights, hood, this estimate is in order from the front bumper to the rear bumper. It is in which I inspect my vehicle and write my estimate. And you can also set your software to record your estimate from the front bumper to the rear bumper. Okay? And then the next page, next page, and the final page is with our figures on it. Our supplement with our deductible and our net cost of supplement, all the repair labor hours is here and the paint materials is here as well. Okay, let's close this screen. If once you lock this estimate, if you want to print this estimate right here where it says estimate, right now it's in preliminary, but if you say lock, it's going to say lock estimate of record. You can put a check mark in this box, you can choose your printer here. Okay, and you can print this estimate. You can also print it to a PDF file and save it to your desktop. We're going to cancel that. Now we have concluded the estimate. Okay, we have completed the auto estimate from the beginning to the end. Independent adjuster can be a very lucrative career. If you learn how to write the estimate, the auto adjusting company will teach you the rest. Just like any career, there are tools needed to do a professional job. If you was a carpenter, you would need a hammer, a skill saw, and a measuring tape. Also, as an independent adjuster, you will need tools. I've been in this industry for well over two decades, and below you will find a list of tools to do a professional job. The idea laptop, the mobile printer, the converter, just to name a few. Also, you will find the auto parts list estimating category, miscellaneous operation, and the scope sheet I use on every inspection. You can download a copy for free. Please subscribe to our channel and get more auto estimating videos just like this one.